The Maltese Kitten, a Sam the Cat Mystery by Linda Stewart. Copyright 2002. Recorded by Nathaniel Beaver on Saturday, June 17th, 2017. Chapter 1. I was on a missing Persian case and prowling around Soho. This was not the case of the year. His ex-girlfriend, a disappointed tabby, wanted him back, but when I found him in a little Italian bistro on Lafayette, up to his whiskers in antipasto, he was eager to stay unfound. So I didn't find him, and walked away. It was nearly ten-thirty on a freezing December night. The radio, the last time I had heard it, predicted snow, and by the time I got back to 11th Street, the moonlight was full of dots. I paused at the corner and crossed at the light. My agency office, a Mac and a phone, is a little one-cat operation that I run out of Hunnaker's bookstore. I entered the bookstore and angled my head. From the darkened hole of the rear office, Otto Hunnaker's raspy voice, pre-recorded and stuck to tape, was explaining, Hours from ten to six. If you leave a message, I'll call you back. I raced to the office. Mostly the calls that come in the evening are meant for me, and I expected the jilted tabby. Aren't you back yet, Sam? It was Sue. I jumped to the blotter and pounced on the speaker. Yeah, I'm back, I informed her. Just. Are you cold and hungry? She said. I grinned. Is that an offer? An offer to what? To fix me dinner and keep me warm? I could hear her bristling over the phone. Whenever she bristles, her whiskers twitch, and she does this thumpity thing with her tail. I was only kidding, I said. I'm sure you're much too busy. Sam, be quiet. There's a girl here who wants to see you. Her name's Miss Wonderful. Yeah, I'll bet. You think she's a customer? Likely so. She went to your office and said you were gone, so I told her to wait for you. Her and her locks. She brought me some, that, and a spoonful of caviar, Sam. I pictured it, black as sin and corrupt with the scent of Iranian waters. Send her in, darling, send her in. Sue was calling from right next door, where she does the night shift at Kitten Caboodle, a kind of combination beauty parlor, boarding house, and boutique. A word she tells me is French for rip-off. Sue's a buddy, and maybe more. I took a second to clear my head, and clean my whiskers, and lick my paws, and take my seat in the swiveling desk chair. Then I tried an appropriate face, piercing eyes and a savvy grin, or savvy eyes and a piercing grin. I was still deciding when Miss Magnificent popped through the mail slot and cat-footed in. I watched her come on to me, hearing that faint, provocative click of stiletto nails as she angled her way through the darkened bookstore. She got to the office and moved with a slow and sinuous subtlety into the light. She was totally slink and the color of tea. Hot tea. And forget about lemon, this one was strictly sugar and spice, and she stood in the doorway and frisked my intentions with much too adorably innocent eyes. I said, When you're ready, she said, Do you bite? I said, On occasion, but never a client. She nodded approval and leapt to the desk. Then I guess you could handle yourself with a villain. You got any villains? I'm hoping I don't. That's good for a starter, I said. Her eyes were a nearly miraculous turquoise blue, and she knew how to handle them. Yes, she did. She lowered them prettily, 
melting the desk. It's so hard to continue, she breathed. I'm not... I'm not even sure where I ought to begin. I said, The beginning's the natural spot. That's at 9.47, she said. Uh-huh. He got the phone call at 9.47. He said, I see, from my ad in the post? And then he said, Yes. And then he said, No. And then he said, Yes, I can bring him tonight. To the Beaumont Gallery? I know where it is, at 10.30. That'll be fine. And then he... Oh, Mr. Sam, Mr. Sam. The eyes were anguished. The paws were tense. He just suddenly grabbed little Fluffer and left. I said, Uh-huh. And then who's little Fluffer? Why, little Fluffer's my only son. Oh, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking... My goodness, she doesn't look nearly old enough to have children, but little Fluffer's a total infant. I mean, he's only eleven weeks old. And he's such a sweetie. She tested a smile. And such a beauty. He looks just exactly like my dearly departed husband. I'm sorry to hear that, I muttered. I mean... I'm sorry to hear that your husband's dead. Oh, he didn't die, dear. He simply departed. She flicked her shoulders and added, Men! I didn't go near it. He's also Maltese. I believe, as a kitten, he came here from Malta. My mother warned me. She said, Miss Wonderful, once a rover, a rover again, but we never listen, I mean, to our mothers. So now I'm a widow. She looked at her feet. I waited politely. The guy on the phone? He's my human roommate, she finished. John. Mr. John O'Shaughnessy. Yes, I see. And the actual fact of it was, I saw, I'd seen it too many thousands of times. Human roommate dispatches kitten. He calls it adoption. I call it a crime. Did he leave with a carrier? Yes, he did. It was purple canvas with yellowish straps and a sort of an... Oh! She looked up at the window. A hovering shadow tapped on the pane, then raised its head up and said, I'm sorry, I didn't think you were... Spike, come in! I could see the sparkle of snow on his shoulders, the icy dots on the ebony fur as he leapt through the window and thwunked to the floor. I turned to Miss Wonderful. This is Spike my upstairs neighbor and sometimes assistant. Spike, Miss Wonderful. Spike didn't speak. He stood there and gawped at her, cocking his head. His ears were rigid. His eyes were bright. His curving mouth formed the shape of a wow. I said, Miss Wonderful's here with a case. You can call me Bridget. She cooed and tossed him a jeweled look from those gaudy eyes. It came close to killing him. Bridget, he managed, and made a spontaneous leap to the desk as though he'd been fired from a loose cannon. It's not too serious, is it? He mooed. She nodded somberly. Yes, it is, I said. Her roommate went off with her son. He put an adoption ad in the paper and somebody bit from the Beaumont Gallery. She wants me to go there and rescue the kid. I looked at her quickly. Is that about right? Oh, yes, exactly, she said. Can you do it? 
instead of an answer. I frowned at the clock. We've only lost about twenty minutes. You said they were meeting at, what, ten-thirty? Again, she nodded. Spike took a breath. We'll need a, a description, he said, of your son. I shot him a questioning look at that we, but he didn't notice it. All his attention was focused on Bridget, watching her face and contorting his own in an idiot's grin. Would you say he's a beautiful redhead like you? He looks like her husband, I offered. X, she announced to him quickly. And sort of like you. He's tremendously handsome, she purred, and dealt him another blow from those killer eyes. Are you saying he's black? I intruded. Yes. Distinguishing marks? Um, none that I know of. Not that you know of? He doesn't have marks. And his eyes are... green. They're sort of, a uh, green. Uh-huh, I nodded. And where should I bring him? Where should you bring him? She frowned and looked thoughtful. Well, I, I guess. Could you bring him here? I mean, if I waited at Kitten Caboodle. I shrugged indifference. It's fine with me. There is the matter of payment, I prompted. Yes, I left a deposit with Sue next door. She put it on ice for me. Oh, I see. You mean if you find him, you'll want... She sighed. How much will it come to? The usual cost for a rescued kitten is half a pound. You mean British sterling? And don't play the goof. I mean Scotch salmon. Or Nova Scotia. In cases of hardship, I'll settle for locks. Plus, of course, expenses. Oh dear, I see. But I'll have to be frank with you, Mr. Sam. I'm a single mother. I'm not even sure I can get my paws on another fish. But, oh, if you find him, I'll give you a back rub and tickle your tummy and... Say, it occurred to me, Spike interrupted. If Sam's too tired, he shot me a glance. And you do look tired. Been out all day and you must be exhausted. He looked back at Bridget. I thought I could, well, with your lovely permission, I'd give you a discount and do it myself. I leaned back and watched them. Bridget the Wonderful, eyeball to eyeball with Spike the Enthralled. Oh, Spike, could you really? She flashed him a smile that you could have read newspapers by. That's sweet. And you wouldn't be frightened? He batted the air. I'm a trained detective. I'm never frightened. Come on, Miss Bridget, I'll see you safely to Kitten Caboodle, and then I'll be off. He held his paw up. She giggled and rose. I'll show you a shortcut, he said, and motioned her to the window and out to the night. I pivoted slowly and angled my head. I didn't like it. I liked her locks, but that's where it ended. Her acting stank and her general story was more full of holes than a cashmere sweater in moth heaven. I did what I had to and counted to ten.